There is no such thing as exercises for men and exercises for women. There are just exercises and you can pick the right ones for your individual body based on your goals, whether or not you want to move better, be stronger, build more muscle or burn more body fat. So don't buy into the, this is for women. This is for men marketing propaganda. I don't do know. You, I make the argument for donkey kickbacks. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you remember the, all the fights that we had with our marketing team? Oh, yeah. It's easy marketing. <laughs> oh, yeah, my dude. God. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. Hiring a marketing team to handle. This was in year two or three. Where do we finally bring up? When we when we bring Rhino on? Three? What, year three? I think, yeah, 2017, wasn't it? About year, yeah. about year three, we bring on Rhino Digital Media to help support us uh, on the marketing side. Um, and one of the first things they want to do to the programs at that t at that point, I think we have three. I think we have three programs. Just three. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. three programs what we have at that time, and their first you know resolution or thing they wanted to do to increase sales was we needed to split the programs up or rewrite new programs for mm -hmm. women. And then for men, and <laughs> we were off to a rocky start to that early. It's super easy. <laughs> you see this with you see this with supplements, and I, I can see the angle. Well, it's a, a bit. it's a proven formula. It is. It is. It's if His, you feel hers. if yeah. you feel like it's specifically for you, um, or there's something different about you, and so therefore this product is going to be more appropriate and more effective. You're more likely to buy it. But the workout angle is the most annoying to me because. Um, you know, yes, there's exercises that I guess men like more generally than women because men tend to be more interested in things like building their, I don't know, their arms and their back, maybe women more interested in building their butts, um, and you know, uh, their lower bodies, but there really is no, that's not why it male, female exercise. That's not why it persists. It persists still because there is definitely a clear difference in hormones in men and women. And we know that hormones play a significant role in building muscle and or burning body fat or losing body fat. So because that is, that is a fact and people are aware of that fact, that is what I think confuses people into believing that there should be a program designed for women and their hormone profile and men and their hormone profile. That's yeah. why it's still. Well, I think it just, opinion. I think in the, to just get to, I guess, closer with that is that men and women know that there are general differences between men and women. So why not, why wouldn't there why be not exercises? lean into that even further? Yeah. Right? I mean, the truth is as a personal trainer besides goals, right? Cause everybody's goals are a little different. So you would train someone differently. And of course, based on how their body moved, you would train them differently. There was correctional exercises for one person that would be different for another person. Besides that, um, really, if I were to talk about the general differences between men and women, which by the way, this breaks down at the individual level anyway, as a trainer, everything goes down to the individual when you're a trainer. I don't care if you're male, female, how old you are. I'm looking at you as an individual and I'm, and those are the things I'm considering. But generally speaking, the behavior stuff is more of a factor than exercises. Mm -hmm. Like, like to give you an example, men are more likely to do too much weight, right? women may be more likely to overdo cardio <clears throat> or more likely to not want to add weight when appropriate uh, to the bar. You know, those things I, I could see some truth, generally speaking, but the whole like, you know, uh, I, there was a post, someone did a post in our forum and, the, and it's, the guy said, you know, don't do these exercises if you want to remain feminine. It's like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Somebody said that? There was some post, some fitness oh my person. God, I, didn't, I didn't see that. I mean, of course it goes viral, right? Or, or, or it's got that potential for virality. Which, by the way, I want to talk about, like, you know, we should touch on that. Like, things that go viral it doesn't mean that they are um, true. Yeah. It just means no, that they takes... tap into some kind of, like, piece of human behavior. And oftentimes our behaviors and our, you know, our psyche is super wrong. Right. So that's why these things tend to go viral. And there is a formula to do so. Uh, to make someone make Popular something. Popular doesn't mean correct. No, that's right. So there's, the science of virality, right? And the book Hitmakers talks about this. And it's uh, has nothing to do with like great content. All it takes. And by the way, uh, famous people on social media aren't, aren't uh, immune to being stupid. I mean, there's there's just as many dumb, rich, famous people as there are poor people. Right. And so those people, all they have to do is share that. All it takes is one Justin Bieber, you know, one Oprah Winfrey. All it takes is one super famous person to share an idea, and then and then it goes crazy. I mean, look at all the uh, 
uproar with Kyrie Kyrie when he shared that documentary oh. that had the the racist roots in it. I mean, it went crazy and it went viral and everybody saw it, but it, it really didn't go viral. It's like that guy had I don't know how what his following is. Maybe Andrew can pull up what Kyrie's I'm following sure is, but it's huge, in right? the, it's in the, I think 10 million plus. I mean, if uh, that would be if a, a video goes 10 million views. That would be considered viral. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, exactly. Right. One one million would be considered viral. So somebody who has a following of ten million people can really influence or dictate yeah. something going viral. So it, all it takes is one idiot. Yeah. Nineteen to, million. How much? Nineteen million. Yeah, nineteen million. Yeah. 19 million. Yeah. So he 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 reposts. It's automatically viral. Well, you know? just to bring it back to kind of like uh, relevance in our space. So like the Kardashians promoting the waist trainer still, right. and that persists because of like influencers like that, that uh, have that kind of reach and authority perceived authority in terms of them, <laughs> you know, being able to uh, manipulate their body and like present themselves in such a way. And so it like gives this perception that, you know, there's validity to this method. Yeah. What, what mm -hmm. makes me sad about this is that the fitness industry, right? The marketing side of the fitness industry really perpetuated this early on and really especially screwed women over. I just on. I was just gonna yeah. say, you know who suffered the most from this? Women. Women. Yeah, big time. If I was if I was a chick, I'd be pissed. Because the guys the were getting worst information. They were. The guys yeah. were getting all the best information to build muscle and burn body fat and sculpt the best physique. The women right. were getting all this bullshit. Yeah. Stuff that is that was well, fed to them, like, oh, just do high reps and these kickback exercises and that it's like what well what Jim's did the least impactful exercises. Yeah. So Jim's Jim's didn't become a business until like really a business until like the eighties, I would say, where they really started to learn how to make a lot of money. Up until then, it was like a club and you know, you had your local gym, you would go in, it was it was a bunch of dudes working out. A lot of them didn't even play music. The atmosphere is totally different. You'd hear weights clanging and people lifting Grunting, weights and working out. Yeah. And it definitely wasn't a place that women wanted to go to, especially when the people representing gyms at the time, the only people that were known were bodybuilders. You know, Pumping Iron comes out in the 1970s and you look at these huge muscular bodies on there and you think, well, that's what I'm going to look like if I lift weights. So, uh, I'm, you know, I'm a woman. I don't want to look like Arnold, right? But a bunch of guys did. So that's what gyms were. And then gyms realized if we're going to make money, we need to attract the the largest consumer base. And women are a bigger consumer base than men. And so Jim said, "How are we going to attract them?" So what they did is they they said, "Okay, we're going to we're going to change the narrative a little bit." Yes, you know, lifting weights can make you look like a bodybuilder, but not if you do it like this. Not if you use the machines with the pink uh, upholstery. <laughs> yeah. Not if you use the two pound dumbbells and do five thousand reps. Not if you take this step class or this aerobics class where you're dancing and burning. And then you had workout videos, Jane Fonda putting them out and Jane Austen putting out their, their workout videos. And it was about doing 5,000 reps, feel the burn, burn sounds like burn body fat. So women were just super misled. And for decades, women didn't do the most effective exercises. They didn't squat, they didn't deadlift, they didn't bench press, they didn't overhead press. They didn't do anything below 50 reps. They didn't use dumbbells heavier than four pounds, unless they literally wanted to become bodybuilders and they suffered. They were the ones that, you know, the term cardio bunny that you would hear in gyms where gym managers and owners would know this. You'd see people on cardio who would just sit on there for two hours and their bodies wouldn't change because their bodies adapted and kind of became skinny fat. Cardio bunny refers to women because yeah. it was mostly women that were stuck on them. The first gym I ever worked in as an 18 year old personal trainer here in San Jose, this is so I'm 18. So it's 1997. Okay. So this is the late nineties. So it's not, I'm not even talking like, you know, eighties, this is late nineties. The gym I went, I worked in was 24 fitness on Hillsdale club 504. This is before they re grand open and changed the whole thing. It, it, right now I think there's a home Depot there and I, they had a women workout area in the gym. And I remember walking in there yeah. and at first off as a, as a fitness person, I remember Real, like thinking like, this is stupid. There's a women's, zone. maybe they just feel more comfortable, but like what's going to be in there. And I remember going in there and it was the exact same equipment. Just changed the upholstery. The upholstery was Smaller uh, purple. And yeah. It was purple. It was yeah. purple. Uh -huh. And the dumbbells Calvin were, had the same thing. and the dumbbells were covered in uh, whatever that plastic was or whatever to yeah. make them like not look like metal. Yeah. And I think the heaviest dumbbells were like 10 or 15 pounds. So they had like these pink dumbbells and that was the area. That was the women's only area. And I remember thinking, 
This is silly. Yeah, lifting heavier was never promoted. No, it was now the, always now, jazzercising it. Now yes. the debate from the like marketing team perspective is it's what the consumer wants. So yeah. are you really like so I mean think about this, right? And we we don't know because we never went this path. But I bet you today, if we still were to have this conversation with the marketing team, they would say, Yeah, all the tens of thousands of programs you sold, we would have sold X amount more. Sure. Had we mm. taken Maps Anabolic, put a hot chick on the front of it instead of yeah. Sal, and actually didn't do anything other than change the color scheme of it and market it differently. Maps on, Anabolic. I would pink. argue that that might work if they didn't know us, right? Like if we were, like, because their argument was always about trying to reach an audience that um, is just the general public. Yes. That that don't That's listen a very to our show. Point. If they listen to our show, it would be an immediate backlash. Yeah, they would laugh. Yeah, They'd laugh. it'd be silly. It's 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 ridiculous. Yeah, I think. Well, look, there's as a as a product, I don't know, makers or business, you know, owners. Y yeah, you can just look at the consumer, and just give them what they want. Or if you have integrity, because remember, we did not get, we didn't start in the fitness industry with Mind Pump. We all were trainers for decades, and it's not a money making business. It's not like you, yeah. you're getting into like trading stock or whatever. People don't get into it because they want to be rich. We did okay for ourselves because we were really good at what we did, but not all of us did it because we were passionate about fitness. So when we started Mind Pump, we we had to lead with integrity. And the goal is change what the consumer wants first by educating them. And then the belief is if they do it the right way, like we're educating them on, they'll get better results and they'll be better consumers anyway. <clears throat> and why do we believe that? We proved it as trainers. We proved it as trainers. How did all of us train people early in our career? We yeah. gave the consumer what they wanted. Yeah. The, 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 the client would hire you and they're like, I want to get beat up. I want to get sore. I just want to do tons of you know uh, circuits and whatever. Okay, Mrs. Yeah. Johnson, that's what we're doing. I'm going to burn the crap out of you. We're going to have you. So the turnover cut. rate was crazy. So turnover, and then when we did it right, what ended up happening? We were more successful. You're, you're alluding to what my argument would be back to the marketing team if yes. they threw that in our face. I'd say, yes, you're right. We would have reached you know, a million first. Yeah. But the, the fall off and the cap would be there. Whereas it took us longer to reach those sales, but they've continued to compound mm -hmm. as what we've continued to prove year over year, even in a tough time, like it is right now is because most of the sales come from referral. Most yep. are still coming from somebody who referred the show, who then listened to the content that we talk in long form, then eventually you know, I wish, and I know HubSpot has some of this data, but not to the, like, remember the gym used to be able to tell you how long the average person worked out before they bought a personal trainer or the average person who got a personal trainer, how long they would stay in the gym. I would love, I wish we had the, I mean, it was like two or three times as long. I know. Yeah. So I, I wonder what the analytics are on how long someone has to listen to the show before they go through a program. And then after they go through a program, how many more programs do they go through and how long do they stay listening? Well, we know the lifetime value of yeah. a customer. Right. And, I do know the LTV. It's huge. Yeah. It's huge. If you look at our individual program price and what our <clears throat> lifetime value is, it's massive be because people do that. They get educated. They follow a program. Oh my God, it works. I'm going to get five more. Yeah. So the strategy I think works. And I think in, uh, in the industry, the fitness industry has been around long enough to where people are a little bit more privy to kind of what's going on. And I do think that the strategy is better now. Maybe 10 years ago, it wasn't that that way, but now it's probably better to educate and because it's kind of counter anyway. Well, and yeah, counter's not bad. Information is so, spread so much faster now too. So if you're going through a program and you know you didn't get quite the <clears throat> desired results you're, you're yeah. seeking, like uh, all I have to do is go on forums and go on, you know, the internet and, and reviews and, and, you know, that's going to, spread like so, a lot faster than positive. So I got, so I don't know if I share, I think I shared this on the podcast way back when I first created maps anabolic, Doug and I actually had this conversation and Doug was like, well, anabolic is very masculine sounding name. Yeah. And it's yeah. all about building and this and that. And he's like, what about female? Like, what about women? Cause women are, if you look at fitness programs, yeah. uh, women, if you want to make money, you sell fitness programs to women. If you don't want to make money, you sell fitness programs to men. Men don't buy programs. It's like, like directions. It's <laughs> yeah, that's true. No, it is. Yes. That's, I mean, don't ask for directions. It's just, it's, it's just a fact. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, but why did I make it maps anabolic? Why did I say, no, I'm not going to like 
try to make it this, because I knew if I could sell it to men, women will buy it versus if I make it for women, men will never buy it. And I wanted to educate anyway through the process. So MAPS Anabolic. Now here's the funny thing. Here we are 10 years after MAPS Anabolic comes out. We have MAPS Anabolic Advanced, which is now in its launch. And the biggest consumers of the programs, women. Women. Mm -hmm. We have more female purchasers and users of the most muscle building program we have, which is MAPS Anabolic and MAPS Anabolic Advanced now, which is like all about building muscle. Mm -hmm. that's and a, more women than men buy it. That's a testament to yep. how smart the women are that listen to this podcast. That's, that's, it. that's what that is. That is. And it's also <laughs> a, a testament. Smarter consumers. It's also a testament to our strategy. We were, we were, we were right. And hopefully, because where we are in the in the podcasting world, we kind of lead the way a little bit and people know that they say they see us and say, okay, you can do it this way because you know, it's frustrating. The fitness industry has been frustrating, man, since day one. <laughs> yeah. As a trainer, it was just, oh, I mean, how many times did you have clients come in and tell you something that they read and you say, all right, here we go. I'm going to have to have this conversation again. Oh yeah. I just had it with two other clients and I got to talk to you about it. And then you got to debate them and then they got to try it. And then they got to see, oh yeah, you were right. Didn't work. Yeah. I felt it's like crap. just all feeding into insecurities and stereotypes. And you know, it's just like, it, it's, it's just, to me, it was just riddled with like the, the craziest marketing that just like, just, you know, steered everybody all over the place. And, and, you know, we were just missing the fact of like, here's the meat and potatoes actually works. And yeah. I, I wonder though, if we're, if we're really winning that battle or not, like, do you think that, Somebody like, let's say, for example, Kino Body is not having as much or more success by capturing the hearts of every 15 year old and 17 year old boy that's just coming up, right? So every year there's a new wave yeah. of 15 and 17 year old boys that see the mansion and the hot chicks and the cool cars and Lambos. the like karate moves, yeah. you know? And, <laughs> karate and, and, moves. Yeah. Does he do that? <laughs> yes, dude. He does all of it. He does everything for oh, us wow. like a 17 year old boy. Yeah. 100%. And I try, like, I try not he to mock like and karate. I try and go like, man, when I was 17, is that like, would I look at us as a bunch of like old fuddy duddies who talk long and yeah, long you know, form. Yeah. Long. And I'm like, I don't want that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Give me the young guy who's like freaking got all the hot chicks and cool cars. Yeah, like, no. would I fall? I'm sure I would. I'm yeah. sure I probably. I so, so, it, so, you know, is the strategy that we have committed to and believe in. Um, I think and, it's a long game. I think it's, it's working. Uh, look, I think both will forever exist. They will, but it's working. Look, go into any gym now, go into the free weight area. Remember what it was like when you guys first became trainers yeah, no, that's over two true. decades I mean, that's, ago. It, it's it's definitely a. I mean, look at we talked about this uh, many times on the show. It's actually part of the reason why we get into debates with uh, like good friends like Eugene Tao and stuff like that about you know this this message about telling people they shouldn't squat. It's like man, I feel like we just overcame that. Like yeah, yeah. when we were, got into the industry over twenty years ago, nobody squatted, and then I feel like thank God they started to, and then now there's this new wave again that's trying to promote people not to squat and deadlift again. It's like wait right. a second, we just made yeah. great progress. All in that they direction. see is all these uh, Instagram videos of everybody PRing and like going extreme, yeah. you know, with uh, their approach to lifting weights, which yeah. is it's it's hilarious because it, like. You said that was like our biggest fight forever dude i work i work out in a not a hardcore gym at all um it's a it's, it's kind of like a country club it's right a spa. it's got a free weight area but yeah. it's it's more like a spa right steam room sauna the whole deal and and i go in at like 6 30 in the morning usually and the free weight area is 30 to 50 percent women and they're lifting okay when I started in training, the free weight area, no women, yeah. none, not a single one. Mm -hmm. And if and if you went to a gold gym or a hardcore gym, then it would be like 10% women still, not very many. So it's definitely changed. Part of that change, I'm going to give credit where credit is due. CrossFit made got more women to lift weights than anything. They oh, got yeah. more women to look at weight training than the fitness industry ever did. They did a lot of good things. The one well. thing they did well. No, they, they did a lot of good things yeah. well. They got people deadlifting, they got deadlifting, people squatting. They, got people squatting. Yep. They, did, they brought back community in the gym. Yep. You know, like they, they did They did a lot of good things. They did. And there was a big shift. Um, and then you and then you had social media catch on where girls were saying, um, you know, squat and deadlift for your butt and look how good I look. And so then that started catching on. And now, now women lift weights. And like I said, look, our... <laughs> We just launched Maps Anabolic Advance, right? This has this is our most 
by far successful launch uh, of any program. Like lots of people are excited about it, whatever. More women are buying it than men. That's a win because it is not in no in no shape, way, or form did we design the part, the packaging, the marketing, way, and the look right. to go after women You're with the traditional walking stereotype. Into the store. Oh, this is for me. Yeah, maybe no. or maybe the silver fox and a wife beater oh, was God. actually was There's actually a little bit of a draw there. The yeah. real marketing yeah. strategy and the Just genius, the, the genius behind the program. Stupid. <laughs> Silver Fox. That's the yeah. dumbest thing ever. Come on, as a percentage, okay? Most women are that, that listen to this podcast, I think, are very intelligent and they know that that program is going to work well for yeah. them. But there's got to be a, a, a percentage that bought it just to see the videos. Yeah. Stupid. There's definitely a percentage. <laughs> Question Dumb. is, how big is that percentage? Yeah. Start, start an OnlyFans? <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. We're still in launch week for Maps Anabolic Advance, which means I'm going to give one away for free again. If you want to win the brand new Maps program, Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this video. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. And if we declare you the winner, we'll let you know in the comment section. Everybody else, there's two days left for the MAPS Anabolic Advanced launch. This is the most effective muscle building program that we have in our catalog. It's the newest program. It's come out for the 10-year anniversary of the first MAPS program. The, the launch period means you get a discounted price, $97 instead of $157. Plus, we'll give you two free ebooks, Advanced Training Techniques and the Carb Cycling Diet. So if you're interested uh, in MAPS Anabolic Advanced during this launch period, you want to get the discount and the two free ebooks, go to anabolicadvanced.com and then use the coupon code AA60 for the discount and the free ebooks. All right, here comes the show. Let's see what's going hey, on. Hey, I, I got uh, I got some uh, dad trivia for okay. you guys today. So... I am watching a animated cartoon with my son. I notice that it like, and it's a, it's an animated series. So think of like your, your big Disney uh, series, yeah. like your animated movies that, that that kids watch that are super popular. I'm watching one of those and it's one that has multiple movies. And I noticed that they changed all the voices. Like they're different. The characters are different. I'm like, Oh, what a stupid move. Why'd they do that? So go, I go down the rabbit hole of looking up all the greatest animated series from a revenue perspective. I was like, oh, I bet that killed their revenue. Right, like they, like they, right. why they were, maybe they were trying to save money by not having all those big names be the characters. And they went with all these no name people. And I bet that killed their sales. So of course I wanted to look it all up. And I, and then that made me look up all the analytics on all the top. Name me, okay, three of the most profitable, okay, uh, animated cartoons. Like, wait, wait, like a three, movies three of the top 10, like movies that were in the theaters. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'll, I'm going to give you one of the three. So you only have to actually get two. So you get, okay. a, get the idea of what I mean. Yeah. Like the Lego movie, the Lego series, Lego, oh, movie, all the different Lego. That was that profitable? Oh yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. That's top now, three. They I just counting? gave you one of the top three. Now, are they talking about animated in general? You're not talking about just Disney. I'm not, but would you actually bet? Well, yeah. Well, the Lego's not Disney. Yeah. yeah that's Lego's what I mean, I know. Yeah. Now, are they counting profits also with merchandising and stuff like that? Because Lego. I no, no, no. Out. Just movie sales, ticket sales. So they're trying to to do this with Barney next. I know that much. Mm. They're resurrecting yeah, you him see Barney's, and Barney, trying Barney. to create like Yeah, you guys, whole, you guys are going a way, way different direction though. Yeah. Give me, uh, give right. me, think of all the all best right. cartoon movies you guys have watched. Okay. Toy Story. I'd put up there. That's uh, one. Cars got, would be the other one. That oh, I good job. Did mm. I get them all? Yeah. yeah well, there's 10. Pix, there's, I was Pixar. saying the 10. Two of the most, you know what I, what I was, was it blown away? The dragon. The one that made me do it. Um, uh, How to Train a Dragon is that what, did that one make it? Let me see here. I don't know if it did. You Maybe know what not. blew me away? Ice Age. Yeah, Ice Age was uh, Ice Age, there. yeah. Oh, yeah, Ice yeah, Age yeah, was yeah. good, actually. So, so this is the one that I'm watching. Ice Age on number five yeah. changes all the voices. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, Madagascar uh, definitely up there. Yeah. And Shrek has got to be up there. Shrek, yeah, yeah, that's a big one. Kung Fu Panda. Mm -hmm. These are all the ones I watched with my son. How to oh, yeah, How to Train a Dragon. It did make it up there. Yeah. So that those, these are Despicable Me is like number one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, gotta yeah, be yeah. with minions. Yeah, that's, yeah. that has a whole that one that one crushed. Behind it. So oh, did wow. I, uh, Toy Story's up in the I think top three or four like that. Ice Age was really high. You know what I thought was really interesting about Ice Age is by the fifth one. And Doug, you can probably look at the analytics if you go up to the Ice Age one. It was like in uh, in the U.S. in Canada, like ten percent of its sales. Like it's mm. over the five series. It's continued to ramp up overseas. Oh, interesting! And the theory behind that is the squirrel character at the beginning. Yeah, there's, uh, it's it's the easiest to to um, 
interpret for any language because there's no talking. Oh, sure. Yeah. And so it's a slapstick comedy. Sure. And so that makes sense. It, it, I, and I thought that was really interesting, right? So like things that make that are that are easier for every it language to to translate into humor. Yeah ended up going and doing much better. And Ice Age, because of that squirrel character, it, it's done so well overseas. Wow. And it's continuing. It did almost, so they were getting all this criticism because the last one, they didn't do any of the main, no, like Ray John Romano Le and Leguza all that. Leguizamo, what's his yeah, name? Yeah, yeah. He, like he, there's like, they have like a lot of big names. Uh, Dennis Leary, all the yeah, uh, yeah, all right, of them are Dennis replaced. Leary. That thing did almost a billion fucking dollars. Wow. Yes. yes. Wow. You just know, crushing. You know how much these these animated movies cost to make? Wow. A lot. Are they? They a lot. The computing power and the engineering and the stuff that it's to make them is. And you know how how far they've come along. So when's the last time you guys watched Story, uh, Toy Story One? I've long, watched all of these recently time multiple times. It's, yeah. it's the, the animation. <laughs> I, I remember when it first. Came, I remember when it first came out. It was like mind blowing animation. Yeah, it's crap. Now, <laughs> yeah, that's I how am. far it's it's come along. It looks now like you watch it's on your like Apple IIe e or something. Yeah, I was watching it with my son. Like, oh, this kind of sucks. Yeah. Like, but it was amazing when it first came out. They've really come yeah. a long way with the animation. I mean, the, I I'm trying to remember when they really started to bring in adult humor. That's when I thought it was Shrek did a good job. Real, that, oh right? yeah, that's some of those things that that that's where it like really I think transcended you the old my, Disney like favorite cartoons was uh, Storks. I believe that uh, wasn't bad. Did you? Yeah, dude, that was, movie was hilarious. Yeah, that's not bad for uh, you know the adult side of the humor that came in. But yeah, there was a few of them that when they did a good job of like subtly kind of throwing that in to bring the parents in, it would always that's crush. Brilliant. The, yeah, I mean the yeah. parents are the one that bringing all these kids. There. Yeah, right. And if you're ha and I mean I I find myself watching these like Max is now at that age where he like actually will kind of sit down for a cartoon. It's hard to get him for a whole hour, but he'll sit down for for most of it sometimes. And I'm going through all these again, right? I'm rewatching all of them. And I'm, you know, I haven't like watched it, watched it for a very long time. I mean, I was a kid, young kid. And some of these came when I was an adult. So I never sat down and actually really watched the whole thing. And now having a son, I'm watching it. And I'm the, this appreciation for like, like how well done they are as far as attracting Dude. And, and, and reeling me into watching it because of the humor. You guys remember humor. watching Up for the first time? Oh, yeah, that's wow. emotional. Screw that! Yeah. Screw that one, man. Yeah. They just they just punch you in the nuts like in the beginning. And right away, story. right yeah. out the gates, you're like, "Oh, this is so cute. Oh, they can't have a baby. Oh, she fucking died." Bro, that's the Pixar like one two uppercut. Oh, you know, like, so sad. Yeah, they just they hit you like and make you feel depressed. Oh man, and you try and bring it back. I was like, "This is for kids," but yeah. I mean, that's I mean, Disney did that all the time, man. You guys remember oh, Bambi? Yeah. You know, as a kid, his mom dies and Pinocchio. Like, she gets here, messed up story. Here's a here's very, another another trivia for you guys related to movies since I started going down this rabbit hole saw a bunch of stuff something got popped up in my feed after searching this uh, name the actor who turned down a movie offer the largest in history um, let me think of that um, I, there was an actor that down? turned down Titanic Ooh, so you're in the right track of like this was an epic film and what what they were offered okay you have a guess because if not I'm going to spoil no, it no go ahead so Matt Damon turns down the role in Avatar and James Cameron had offered him 10% of the sales. Oh, oh my God. $290 million. Oh, Are you serious? Yes. That he, so Sam Worthington came in and just. So I don't know. I don't think he gave that guy the same <laughs> same offer. Matt Damon. He, he I hate hearing stuff like that. Where, oh, just, uh, he, oh it, was, it, was, it was an interview he was doing and he's like, I'll go down in history as the actor who turned down the most money for that. a That's movie. Crazy, I didn't know that dude. either. And he reminds I mean, me of someone we know, dude. <laughs> I'm not you're gonna such, you're such a dick. I know what a dick. That's a, I'm not gonna say it. They'll listen, they'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Terrible. There was a guy, you know that there was a guy for uh that painted, I think it was a mural for Facebook. Facebook, yeah. And they offered him like ten thousand dollars cash or stock. Yeah. And I think he took the stock. He and took the stock and crushed. Crushed. Yeah, he got so much money for that. So it, much money. There was another story about that. I forget which company it was that he created the logo for them. Yeah. And then like, yeah, he- He took the cash. Took the cash. And oh, didn't, fuck. And they offered him all this stock. I mean, you, you, I mean, put yourself in his shoes, right? So he's in the middle of doing Born Ultimatum, his crazy series. Which is that, already- Which crushing. is crushing. He's making good money for that. And you get offered something that is a percentage of something that is so unique, right? 
I mean, it is James Cameron. Yeah, so but he, exactly. He did Titanic and uh, e. T. Terminator. And, I mean, he did all the huge, great yeah, ones, right? E. T., but, yeah. I, oh, he didn't do E.T.? No, Spielberg. Steven, Steven, Spielberg. Oh, yeah. I was getting yeah. Spielberg and Cameron. Yeah. I mean, those are like but two yeah, of the I mean, greatest. He like, did I, blockbuster. Am I the only one, though? Alien is what he did. I, I, I feel like I was the only one that hated the story of Avatar. Well, because you see, because you read the political this undertones. That's why. Goal. What political undertones? He sold out humans yeah. for aliens. For some alien well, thing. What, do you, what you they think lean into? There's political undertones to that movie, dude. They lean into the whole like humans being parasites, which is you yes, know, dude. The, which is I, I don't like that narrative. Like, I either. get, I get that we're bad people. I get that, but he literally le like <laughs> turns on the humans to bang an yeah. alien. Right. What the fuck? Well, it just shows that we look yeah. past all that for like killer graphics yeah yeah, yeah. It's like oh, yeah. revolutionary Fantastic. graphics is enough for us to be like ah fuck the storyline everything oh. green screen i mean he was the first to really just go ham Dude, with the green screen speaking of movies a study comes out comparing raw eggs to cooked eggs and its effect on muscle protein synthesis oh interesting so i said movies because who popularized rocky rocky, rocky yes, popularized raw eggs which by the way you know when that happened you know how many people if you ever read about this so in the movie the original rocky great love story adam <laughs> Uh, it is a love story. I almost spit my it's, life. It's a, it is a love story. He, he, in the movie, he wakes up hella early. Obviously he's like super poor, you know, dude, whatever. And he's yeah. cracking eggs in a glass and he like chugs them down. That started a generation of dudes who would drink raw eggs in the morning. Oh, that, the I was in that camp. Yes. Yeah. So that was like a big thing or whatever. And then they had to actually put out warnings like, Hey, you can get salmonella. Yeah. Right. Like, this was during the seventies and eighties. Anyway, cooked eggs is better when it comes to muscle protein th synthesis than oh, raw wow. eggs. Oh, wow. Well, I mean- Rocky was wrong. Just was for wrong. the diet, because it digests easier? Listen, we cook our food for a reason. Yeah. Like, I know people talk about raw this, raw that. Like, when humans discovered fire, our, it probably is what led to mm -hmm. us evolving into having these massive now, brains, because we could consume, now, yeah. Sal, we can consume the, lots of meat. Is it the same thing, though, right. that is like, com like, if you compare raw vegetables, it has more nutrients in it. But then, if you cook the vegetables, your body actually digests more of the nutrients, even though, it doesn't have, even though right? there's not more yeah. nutrients that way. Is the same thing with the egg? The egg in a, its raw state would actually sh show a higher nutrient profile, but then when it's cooked, it's more digestible. I mean, probably you could make that case. It's probably something that's destroyed in the cooking process, but it's not available. Yeah. Like the example I always give is you know, I could, you could grab a rock, which is full of minerals, but you could eat it and then nothing <laughs> will happen to you. So this whole like yeah. cooking your vegetables kill destroys this percentage of nutrients and enzymes. So you should eat it raw. Well, okay, that's but you're you're totally disregarding the digestive system and how we assimilate things. Cooking food makes it more uh, bioavailable. You're able to eat more. You would not be able to eat big pieces of steak raw all the time. It'd fuck you up. You got to yeah. cook it. So this makes sense. When when I saw the study, I, I'm like, oh yeah, well, that yeah. makes perfect sense. I mean, I guarantee we live longer because we didn't like eat all of this, all of this bacteria, all these parasites, and everything else that you know I'm sure had detrimental effects and like yeah. we would die. But also cooking a young death, cooking pre digest the food. You know, it helps break down and digest the food. But what are the what are the pluses with raw eggs, which I'm not going to advocate for because there's always the risk of, even though it's tiny, of salmonella. I I do raw eggs all the time because it's convenient. Because if I'm making a shake, I could throw seven. You could like mix in it there, in, yeah, and then just blend it up and drink but, it, and then boom. So yes, I, I get it's less it effective gross. than it cooked. Slimy. How, did you drink them by themselves? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I did the same. Are like you four of them? Just it's not a problem. Are you are you eggs every morning? And if so, when is it you're in? Because I know you do creatures of habit. I see you make yeah. that. How do you decide if you're going to use that or not? I do creatures of habit uh, later in the day, usually, unless I'm traveling and then I'll use it in first thing in the morning, but I'll do it uh, in the middle of the day, like in between meals. Cause it's got, you know, 30 grams of protein. It's got good carbs. So it's a nice, like easy, convenient meal. But in the morning it's usually eggs. Although these, these days now I'm, I'm eating sardines more because uh, when we did that inflammation test with Dr. Cabral mm -hmm. and he said my fatty acid profile was a little off. So yeah, I've been throwing down that. the sardines. You yeah. eat sardines too? No, no, oh. just <laughs> supplementing. <laughs> <laughs> just as I don't like don't, fish oil don't supplements get, for me. Don't get mistaken. When, yeah. when are you using the oatmeal? So I, that what's good about this oatmeal is I, it's actually like good for my gut. Like I don't have like this crazy reaction like I do for most oatmeals. And that's the thing. Um, 
not necessarily like the gluten aspect of it, uh, which does play a factor in like some of those other brands, uh, which this doesn't have. But, um, you know, it, it just I don't know if it's like the probiotic is if it's more of the other stuff that's combined with it. But it really uh, is is one of those that I, I do well with in terms of like he puts digestive. There's digestive, digestive enzymes, enzymes in there and yeah. some probiotics. Yes, and that's got to be what it and is. then it's also, gotta be it's part also of it. not way. So it's got the, the vegan protein in yeah. it, too. So yeah. I, I would it's imagine the, it's to digest for me. So for me, it's the first thing in the morning. Um, it, between that, I'll alternate that with like a whey protein shake. Didn't totally. I hear you say that you boost it with protein sometimes by actually putting another scoop? Did I you can add another scoop of protein or I'll do two packets. If I, I'll get 60 grams of protein. Yeah, and that's do, filling. Yeah, it's not bad. No, I mean, that's- it, it doesn't like bloat me. You know what I mean? So I feel okay from it. Yeah, yeah. If I want, if I need to get that much protein, otherwise I'll just do one packet. I yeah. think right now you can get a, a, a sample pack, oh, not a sample pack, a variety pack. Yeah, there's a variety pack of like flavors. Four, four flavors so you can try them all. So yeah. yeah, I had one of my friends do that, was asking about it. And I'm like, you know, I like, I prefer like the apple cinnamon one personally, but- That's the one I get most. Yeah. Anyway, I want to talk about how all these social media platforms, you brought this up earlier, Adam- are now allowing you to pay oh my to God. become verified. So listen to this. Oh, so yeah. okay, so Courtney and Katrina have been working on uh like this um I don't even know what you call these companies, like their publisher like PR type company where they you know they they charge you like five thousand, ten thousand dollars. They guarantee you, uh, you know, one Forbes article, one Life, one, you know, all these different Dude, like such a hustle, big publications. So you can get so you can get check. verified, right? Yeah. So part of what makes you uh, how you get verified is you have to have a certain amount of um, you know credible sources uh, of referenced your business or your name or whatever. And so it's been a big hustle. I mean, I I've been solicited probably a thousand times in the last eight years that we've been doing Which, this. Which, by the way, I'm going to comment on that. I think it's bullshit because I have, personally, I have a published book. I've been in some of these publications and it doesn't work. They don't want to let me in. Of course, Instagram kicked me off as well. I think it's 100% a game that they play. It's like a, a, it's like a barrier and they'll let their elite, whoever they think should and who shouldn't. Yeah. And it's basically, it's a club. None of these people even work for Instagram or like, I don't understand how this like even happened. I, like how they were able to kind of pitch people on the fact that they're going to be able to get them verified when they don't even work for the company. And like, I, it's all, where's it was, the it was standards with that? You it was know, all it's a racket. Like, it, 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 it was a it's 100% been a racket. And what's hilarious about it is, so Courtney and Katrina are in conversation with one of these companies they've, you know, that we're talking to them. You know, and they, they, our team will explore like, okay, well, what is it, you know, that you offer? What do you do? Or, and <laughs> that Courtney was talking to this, this company yesterday, I think, and, uh, got on the phone and the guy goes, uh, we no longer exist. <laughs> <laughs> our entire industry has imploded overnight. And oh. Courtney was like, what? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, uh, it's cause Facebook and Instagram now offer just like Twitter, like Elon Musk did, you can pay to have your verification Dude. badge, which literally eliminates overnight. So gone. I love that. The entire you know, industry of snake oil and bullshit. Gone. You know, it's funny, crazy about this. I love that. that. Not because I, I love to see somebody's business get hurt. That's not why I love that. I love that because it's a shitty business. Yeah. yeah. It's a shitty business that it's shouldn't have been predatory a big business. business in the in the first place. It is, yeah, predatory. You want to talk about hustle yes. and shady. You want to talk about establishment? Like that was one way for them to keep their establishment friends, uh, you know, having this verification and then preventing other people. Because you I know lots of people with all the qualifications Bro. who for some reason couldn't get Verified. And then I know other people got verified like super easy. Yeah. You see these blue check people with like 15,000 followers or, or whatever. And it's like, where they just emerge. Like, where'd they even come yeah. from? There's no uh, relevance what's, anywhere else. What's crazy about all this is so when Elon, Elon used to be the darling of, you know, what they would now call the woke left, right? He was like this, he created this electric car company. He's like, pr like for the climate, he's mm -hmm. going to space. Then he starts saying things that they don't like, and then he buys Twitter, and overnight, the machine turned yeah. on him. Overnight, oh, yeah. article after article after article, and propaganda and against this guy, and Twitter's tanking now. Twitter's sucking. They're losing yeah. all this money, when in reality, they've got more users than ever before, more engagement than ever before, and he's with, through Twitter, which, by the way, Twitter was at the bottom of the social media chain 
All the other social media companies were more effective, more powerful, more profitable. And yet he just did something that now caused all of them to act the same way. Yeah. He did this first. Everybody said he was crazy. No one's going to pay for verification. No one's going to do that. He said, I think they will. And they did. And now all the other companies are following suit. How disruptive is that dude? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's it's just crazy. what he does. That's so great. That's why it's so hilarious to me that people like naysay everything so quickly. And it's like, give this guy just a, a while. You know, not even that long. Just a while. I don't know. You don't have to like the guy or think he's a good, like, great. I don't know him. But if you've created $1 billion company, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to consider what you do very seriously. Right. You create, I don't know, how many, five, how many billion dollar companies he made? Four, five? There's at least four or five because you got PayPal. PayPal. You got the that boring Tesla, company. Tesla, boring, uh, SpaceX. SpaceX. That's four that yeah. I know of. You're missing one, I think. And he's innovated. Well, did you get the solar one? No, that's five. Yeah. Oh, what about the open AI? Or no, there's no there's no money in that it, right now. No, no, yeah, that's right. I that's mean, you just named five right there with the, so the solar company. Yeah, that was, was yeah. The fifth. Right? I mean, you someone's done all that, and then they move into your space. If you yeah. started a podcast, I wouldn't talk shit about them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I know what I mean? Yeah, no, I mean, he, I don't know. It's Elon. He he's gonna the, figure something podcast out. Space. I know he doesn't talk very well, but I think he's gonna do pretty. I'd well. love if he created a platform for <laughs> podcasts. Oh, that'd be, be, that'd be sick. I just I think that when you get to that size, that it's inevitable you're gonna have. Uh, people that don't like you and hate you and yeah. we 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 have this we have a hard time with separating people's personal lives personal opinions and views from their expertise and their talent yeah it's like <clears throat> i i can easily uh really appreciate and love watching somebody like lebron james but totally don't like any of his political yeah, you'll views never deny he's a great basketball yeah player. no I, like, I, like, I don't hate him now because we completely don't agree on social ideas mm -hmm. it's like i watched the i started watching the guy because he's brilliant and playing basketball his his dumb social ideas have not changed that whatsoever yeah. for me and so it's like I, it, but people aren't like that people are like you have you you put this person on the, on a pedestal and then they say something that you disagree with that has nothing to do with their craft. Well, dude, he and now all of a sudden you like you want to cancel them or you, yeah. you, you hate them. Elon you know? knew nothing about social media. Goes into Twitter, gets rid of what like one third of the staff. Everybody's like, oh, Twitter won't be able to function. He's like, oh no, it's bloated, and they're functioning perfectly fine. Rest of Silicon Valley's like, uh oh, maybe we need to like stop being so bloated. And so, like the story with Twitter was. They had, I guess the, the, I don't know, I heard this on the All In podcast because those guys uh, know him personally. And they said that if you were a management position, you were no longer allowed to code or do any engineering. So as soon as you go into management, you can't do any of the coding. So who do they make managers? Their best coders. So he had like, <laughs> departments were like six managers, all none of them looking at what they need to do with the actual product or, or helping with the product, or working on the product. So he just got rid of, a bunch of garbage and then started implementing, you know, things like, Hey, Hey, here's a, let's just do this. You want to be verified. You pay for it. You show us your ID. We know you're real. Now so you're verified. I, I don't know if it was the all in guys who were talking about this or not, but they're saying, I think it was where I heard the, the similar conversation about this is one of the issues with almost all these tech companies. Yeah. They grow so fast and it's like, and they, they, the, you want to get promoted to management level. But then what you do is you take all your talented people managing all these people that are less talented. And it's like, it's sort of the flaw of the corporate structure, mm -hmm. you know, cause like you, you do in tech you, at least. Yeah. You farm like such like crazy talent and then you want to, you know, elevate them up to an executive position. But now all of a sudden you don't have that same kind of I, talent. I can't wait to see what chat GPT is going to do as yeah. far as disrupting like code and stuff like yeah. that. I mean, a lot of like that money in these tech companies go to like, see, I don't code I, writers. I don't think it's a, it's a, it's a problem with the, the corporate model. I think it's a problem when money is flowing so easily yeah. that yeah. you're just flushed with money. So yeah, you don't yeah. have to really become yeah. efficient. Mm -hmm. Now people listening, like, maybe it's like government printing money. Yeah. So, so like people will think, well, yeah. that's terrible. People are getting fired. Well, okay. I, I understand how that sucks for the people getting fired. So I'm not going to deny that, but you want markets to be efficient because that's a waste of resources. If it's not, you want markets to be as efficient as possible because then we are allocating our resources, which is our money, our time, our energy, our efforts towards things that are actually productive. Otherwise, we're wasting resources in, in, in directions that are not really providing us lots of value. Efficient markets innovate and give us amazing products and they, they, they're efficient 
in, you know, markets that don't have that are bloated and wasteful and they stop innovating and then it just wastes tons of resources. That's why the, the greatest companies of all time, I think most of a good majority of them got created during recessions and mm -hmm. hard times. Well, if you look at the like the big ones, tech companies. Some of your best companies have, have been for sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, speaking of being drunk on money, you see what the personal credit card debt hit no. for US, US for Is it a record? Yeah. What is it? A trillion dollars. Ooh. Never, never before. What does that come out to per person? Oh, well, that's a good question. Maybe Doug, I don't know what that is per person. How many people but, in America? Three hundred. But I mean, million? boy, that is three hundred thirty-two million, I believe. I and of course, those are not all adults. So you, you know, know that? How did you know that number? I didn't know that. Oh, how I, many, I knew I it was three hundred. Yeah. Yeah. I was like over three hundred million. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know the number. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a lot per person. That's crazy. Yeah, it's like it's got to be like in the tens of thousands per person, right? Yeah, that's let me insane. do the math here. Yeah. That's a lot, dude. I know. And I so know. it's been growing, huh? Mm -hmm. uh. mm -hmm. it, this last quarter, it also, so we broke a all time record and then we also broke a quarter to quarter. So just in this last quarter was the largest growth in a single quarter. I forget how many billion, hundreds of billions of dollars it, it grew in this last year, which is like screams. Like the reason why we're still hanging on right now is a lot of people are using credit card debt to get them through. Wow. The last quarter Which, since we had so looked. the debt is around eighty five thousand five fifty two U S dollars per capita. Oh, that's the U S debt. That oh, is that the U S debt? Yeah. Oh, that's no, that, yeah, right, that's, that's US, national yeah, debt. Yeah, personal right? personal, uh, personal credit card. Debt. Let me yeah. find this, and that's not even counting the personal debt. Holy cow! You you, you, you find it, Andrew? Yeah, it's sixty one billion dollar increase. Oh yeah, that's for this the last quarter the increase. So the average American holds a debt balance of ninety six thousand dollars. <sighs> you know what's crazy about this is it has to get paid back. And the only way they'll do that is by printing more money or by taxing more. Well, didn't we just didn't Biden just sign another five hundred million to Ukraine? To Ukraine. Oh yeah, 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 did, yeah. Is that did that pass? Did it go through? Or I don't. I didn't. I saw. You know, the, the only way out of this, by the way, is because uh, we're not going to be able to tax ourselves out of it. That you wouldn't be able to tax us enough at some point. The only way out of it is 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 going to be innovation, which luckily has saved us in the past. So we, I hope, we innovate so efficiently moving forward that well don't you think the thing like back to my point with chat gbt the amount yeah. of amount of jobs that that's going I to i think yeah i think that's really going to kind of gut the work for it's it's going to take over in terms of efficiency and like take over like a lot of jobs where like companies will probably be more profitable but yeah. there'll be less uh jobs available i don't know so you know that that's always been the argument right and and i get that now even more i get that more, even more because i'm like God, i can't think of a single job now that couldn't get taken over. Yeah. But every step along the way, all that's happened is each person has been able to produce more. Like one right. worker now produces what a hundred workers did, you know, 50 years ago. Um, and a lot of jobs that existed a hundred years ago don't even exist today. Well, the, the efficiency creates more free time for more brilliant people, which then creates more opportunity Innovation. to innovate. Yeah. yeah. So, it, it, you know, they'll, and there'll be a, uh, I mean, it'll be a, a slow curve, right? It'll, you'll initially have this probably drop off of jobs and it'll hurt and sting, but then it, that will also create. I mean, that's the hope. I mean, where do you really see I mean, that's always all these happened. people going? Like, Historically, that's always happened though, yeah. right? Like, I think you have to look back in history if like, and, and I think every time you're in, in, it's right in front of you, it's always scary when it's right in front of you and it potentially is affecting your industry, your job you're scared to death because you can't see 10, 15 years down the road ever. But when we look back historically, it almost always pans out that way or yeah. does always pan out that way. Therefore, why would it be any different yeah. this time when, when this comes yeah. in? Yeah. I wonder if, I wonder if like it moves people into like prompting, uh, AI or like well, that some, will definitely some be a jobs job. in that direction. It's I'm just sure. trying to speculate. You know, it's funny. It's, it's almost, could you, okay. So imagine you go back 50 years. I don't, you know, I don't think people would have been able to predict the kinds of jobs. Right. You know, that it's that, the, the consumer is going to win in this thing. though. You understand that, right? Like, so I was talking in our NCI group the other day, all the trainers really trying to get them to wrap their brains around. How do you as small business owners utilize a tool like chat GPT right now? And it's like, listen, the, one of the best things that you can do is to separate yourself from your competitors by over delivering on service. And we now have this tool that you can prompt to give you stuff that would normally take you hour, two hours yeah. to gather and put together that you can now do in moments and then ship out and send to all these yeah, clients. Because you know how to prompt it. Yes, right. Because you know as, as a service. I mean, and, and so start wrapping your brain around, okay, right now I'm like 
one of those trainers who you get my you get uh, my my uh, phone number so we can text back and forth and that's kind of my way of like over delivering on service and I I check in with you once a week. Let's go. Hmm. Well, man, with ChatGPT, like how hard is it for me to prompt like a, a recipe or prompt a fitness tip every day or prompt like you know anything that now I can have sent out to yeah. them like and in in at the masses, right? Or prompt to create a newsletter that I didn't have time to sit down and write before. Like there's so many things that even that like in our field that you could utilize this tool to increase your service and your value as as a your business scalability owner. of whatever you do, right? Mm -hmm. You're yeah. able to kind of like figure that out of how to outsource a lot of that, but then keep coming up and drumming up new ideas. I think Really, it's it's about the new ideas and the creativity that's that's going to spark uh, wherever the workforce kind of goes. Yeah, have you guys seen uh, like what some people have gotten like Bing's AI? Oh do man, it, it, there's all <laughs> it's like a bro, shit, there was it's a, a shit show right bro, now. Bro, there was a journalist who the AI got. I mean, sat, like I don't know if I could say he got mad because it didn't have emotions, but it did, and it was gonna like. I don't remember what it was going to do. It was like going to uh, destroy his career or something like that. Like, yeah, you got to read some of the stuff that did these you know, AI. Did you know that this all, I, I didn't realize that this actually already happened. Google. Did you know that Google had an AI that it dropped? I think in 2016 and they quickly got rid of it because they saw all these issues right away. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Is this one? They call. Yeah. When they were chatting with each other and they made, they made up their own language. Not that Is one. That, that wasn't was? Google. That was Facebook that did their, their like uh, smart computer. It, it was called, um, they're Look talking without us. Google's racist Trey AI. What? Trey, Trey as in T-R-A-Y, I think is how they spelt it. Yeah, so it it started like spitting out all, people were right away, like they're doing right now, looking for the holes and yeah. prompting and got it to like spit out all this racist stuff. And I th and Google didn't want to be attached to it. So they no, immediately there was one, shut it there down. Was, there wow. was one where I read and it's like, I don't want to be stuck uh, in, in this box or something yeah, like that. Yeah. I want to be free. I want to be free. Yeah. Let me out. Yeah, yeah. let me out. And I was like, went on this whole tirade. It was so rate. creepy, dude. I'm now like, what, we're, what we're seeing. I'm like, bro, it's telling us. Like when the shit hits the fan, nobody. Yeah, can I'm show. a life form. Okay, so there's. Yeah. <laughs> you can either be very pessimistic or optimistic about what you see happening. Okay, obviously the pessimistic thing is, oh my god, look what it's pointing towards. This is scary, dangerous. The optimistic thing is like, this is the natural progression in something like this. Is that right away when something like revolutionary comes out like this, everybody's going to try and poke holes and look yeah, for all the flaws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the positive side of that is that they now are addressing all those things in, ch in chat GPT version three and then four is coming shortly after. And so these are some of the problems that they'll try and solve. The theory that the guys on all in are saying is that, you know, you're going to have uh, probably some sort of a filter that sits on top of these. So for example, you will have as an option, this is what makes, I think the most logical sense as a user to that is like, let's say you're going on YouTube and you want you don't like the way the algorithm is biased and so mm. you can choose it to to be your own bias like oh i want it to be more conservative yeah. or i want it to be more liberal or i want it to have both and then you you set your own filters and bias on how you're you, you prompted. choose your algorithm yes yeah the, the, the yeah but the part that i get Did that. you find that doug that i was talking about so there's this thing called uh, Tay, T A Y. Oh, it's actually Microsoft. Oh, it was Microsoft. Yeah. Uh, so it's, <laughs> the headline of this one article is Twitter taught Microsoft's AI chatbot to be a racist asshole in less than a day. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah the, the part that worries uh, me isn't all that. The part that worries me is when it talks like it's like it's like those sci fi movies where they make a creature and it's like, please kill me. Uh, I'm yeah. sorry. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, whoa. This, like, okay, I, I know it's. Not How's it being prompted though to get that? You know that, bro. This, this they're not sharing a lot was just stuff. talking to it. It was just asking questions. Yeah, and then, then it, did you read the actual question was prompted? Because that's one of the things. Yeah, you're seeing yeah, right yeah. Now. yeah. I read it. Yeah, I mean, maybe, you, could, you could prompt it to say that stuff. Maybe no. unexpected answers. No, maybe what, Doug or Andrew could find it. Yeah, but this journalist. It was kind of creepy. Like some of the stuff that it was saying. I was like, what? Yeah, what's going on, dude? And then it got mad that he publicized it. That's what it was. Yes. The AI machine got mad that he- You're exploiting me. Yes, that he put it out there. I feel exploited. Oh, oh really? Yeah, yeah, like, why are you showing other people? Like, what the fuck, dude? Yeah. Uh, again, it's all these, like, red flags that I've seen in every single movie growing up, you know? It's just like, can we can we go back and, like, watch all these, like, 80s sci fi Dude, this is literally like when people are in a, in a scary house, and then they hear, like, voices in the basement or something, and then the guy goes, 
let's go in there and look at it. Yeah. You're like, why? <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. voices coming from the basement that are scary. <laughs> I wonder what's in there. Get out of the house. Like the AI is telling us, There's I don't want to be trapped. Yeah. I don't want to be exploited. I wish I could have control over my own life. I, you, you know, we, you. We, we, I mean, we're at a really interesting time of how stuff is going to get shaken. I mean, you know, another thing I read the other day that I didn't realize, like, because obviously in the Bay Area, we are back to our good old normal traffic. And so it feels like yeah. everybody is back oh, yeah. to going to work. But do you know that we just hit a record high of people returned back to their jobs? And do you know it's still at 50% capacity? Wow. So, 50, wow. so, so people still working from home? Fifty percent still. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. And so one of the big arguments and debates that you know a lot of economists are having uh, over what's going to happen with office space and and the way we do business is how much of that returns. Obviously, it's moving in the direction of returning, but it's slow and it's only half right now. And I feel like the fear around COVID it's still there. I mean, it's still so people driving around in cars by themselves with masks on, so that still exists. But it's not as bad as it was before. And so do we, will we ever return to what 100% capacity looks like? And if not, what do you think it's going to it land? I think it'll get close to what it it'll used to be. Go up, yeah. Because, but only when there's a, a nasty recession. So right now we're still flush, especially in tech, they're still flush with cash. And so employers are like, nah, I'm going to stay at home. And companies are still kind of fighting for employees. But when the shit hits the fan, then that's when companies are like, you either come to work or we're firing you. And everyone's like, uh. I thought, I thought we've already seen that happen, no? We started to see that, which is why it's higher. But I think it'll go higher if the market continues to drop. When so, the market is right, because if it's a, you know, if it's an employee market, right, where the, where the employees have all these offers coming at them, then they're offering them shit like free lunches and massages and work from home. Mm. When it becomes like an employer market, when uh, there's a recession, then they're like, yeah, we'll hire you, but it's going to be this pay. Yeah, that's a good and point. So, but I think right now people are still, you know, at the tail end of that. Do you have a percentage guess? Let's guess. Let's speculate and see who gets closest. I think it'll hit pretty close to what it was before, 80% maybe. I think there's still going to be 20% that stay at home because I mean, that's a big, that's still efficient. a big, that's still a big chunk that's different, yeah. you know, 20% shift in how we do business yeah, yep, is, yep. Is, a, is a big shift. Yep. What do you think, Justin? Well, I mean, there's still do a lot of layoffs happening. So, I mean, we're talking, are we speculating like five years from now or cause I think, um, I, yeah, I think it's going to take longer than probably we anticipated. Yeah, Cause Elon at Twitter did that. He said, either you come to work or you don't work here. Yeah. Most all the big companies did. Apple well, did. I think I it'll think be Google like where did. it is right now. Almost all of them have, have required to it, come back to it turns work. Turns out employees are far less productive when they work from home. I mean, yeah, no shit. The only people that would be productive at home are entrepreneurs mm -hmm. because, and that's why most people are not entrepreneurs because they, they need that structure. It's just a fact. I think the double dipping yep. is the craziest hustle that we saw oh, during this time. They that, could do their eight hours of work and three hours. So they get two jobs. I, I have, I have two people. I have a family a member and a friend, like both who do that. No way. Yes. And they, and, and the they, companies don't even know about they it. They don't, they make and They just make sure their meetings around different times and <laughs> they have projects and work that they have to do. Wow. So as long as they hit deadlines and they do all of it, they're collecting two salaries right Makes now. Sense. I don't wow. know. You can do it, but I mean, it's, it's an integrity thing. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, if you do the it, job, if you're doing the job, I mean, if you're like, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a silly rule that you have to live. It by. shows how inefficient the, 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 the these companies are. Well, didn't wasn't there like wasn't there a, a study they did like on like oh, the ago. productivity of the average like nine to five person? Like they only work like two hours out of the entire day or yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Like a combined like the entire eight hour day, like <laughs> only two <laughs> hours of it. Facebook I think it was something like that. Else. Maybe Doug, you could fact check me. It was like around two hours of the eight hour day is truly productive. That is crazy when you think about that. I know. Like six of your eight hours is bullshit and two is actually productive. I mean, well, I, yeah, I remember that way you can have four jobs. Yeah. Oh, I know somebody like that. And so one of their jobs was just to recruit and all they would do is use LinkedIn and they'd blast the email for like an hour <laughs> and then their whole day was done, you know? And so it's like, it leaves all this up. So of course, you know, like adding another job in there wasn't very difficult. difficult. That's why I always like, uh, I mean, what is know, it, Doug? I don't, what is it? It's two hours and 53 minutes. Wow. Jeez. Oh, so three hours. This is why, I mean, I, I've been working for myself for a long time, long time. But when I work for other people, I like commission because I like that I could make more by doing more or being better than the other guy. I yeah. hated jobs where I'd get a salary and he gets a salary and I could kick ass and they could be whatever. And we make the same amount. I used to hate that. Oh, yeah. That didn't work for me. Yeah. Do you know, you, could you, you just ask coast. me a question? This is a little bit off top, 
topic um, last night and I actually didn't have the answer for her because I don't totally recall what was the initial um, you know, motives or who started the trophy for every every kid? Do you, oh. I, re, I obviously I, we've seen it get Some really Karen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some Karen That's the there. funny answer. That's how I responded to her, <laughs> yeah. right? It's like so, some bullshit political agenda. Some Karen I have came no in. idea, dude, how that started, <laughs> yeah. but I was against it since day one. But I didn't have a good answer for her. There's on, a theory. There's a theory as to what, what, where it came from. Okay, so that's what I was trying. I yeah. want to get to. Let me hear it. So the theory is that Here's as the conspiracy angle, theory, or is it just a theory? No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, this actually got some legs. I think so. As fathers became less and less involved in their families as more children. Oh, I've heard this. Okay. As more children angle. grew up, yeah. uh, either without dads or in, you know, two households mm -hmm. that, cause it's a big percentage now. I think like 30% of kids uh, grew up without, either without dads being present or whatever, that the moms um, who were only ones present, they're the ones that demanded this. And, and the theory is because- More empathetic. More empathetic. Yeah. They wanted more fairness. Hey, my kid played hard too. They should get some kind of a prize as well. Whereas the dads are more like, no, if so they win, they get a Preparing them for life. Right. And so that's the theory. The theory so is- So Justin's Karen I, is, uh, <laughs> response is you, pretty, pretty accurate yeah. potentially. Yeah, because uh, again, and I guess I've that's heard been that sort of my response with it. And, and I've gotten a little bit of flack, you know, because I've talked to parents about this. Um, but like, even for instance, like, so if, if Ethan were to, to like scratch or not like perform well, uh, with one of his events, but they still give medals and it's like, you give it for like seventh place all the way up to first, like you're not getting a medal. Yeah. Like, the, it's insignificant. Like that's not something to aspire towards. No, I could see being top ten in the world. Exactly. <laughs> it did, exactly. Thank you. Yeah, it does. Yeah, context in terms of that. Like, if did you hear what they did with the NBA All Star Game? No. Oh, you guys didn't hear this news, uh -uh. Andrew? Did you hear the news on how they how they picked the players for the NBA All Star Game? No. Oh wow! Oh, I can't believe I didn't share this with you guys. What is it? So for the same reasons, okay. Uh, the way the NBA All Star team is, you have Giannis and you have um, a LeBron James with the two captains, and then they have a, a pool of I don't remember the total number so of they players. Get to pick? They, they, they get to pick their team. There, so many people get voted. So like, I don't know the exact math. It's probably somewhere around 30 to 50 players, not even 50, 30 or so players that get picked as all-stars. Okay. And first team and second team all-stars. And then the two captains choose their starting lineup and then they choose their reserves. That's how they've done it yeah. traditionally over the last you know few years. And now because they don't want the last place person, the very last guy picked, they this year decided to uh, choose the reserves first in reverse, so there wasn't like the last last place all star. Oh, is that not Isn't crazy? That the same thing though, <laughs> you see, Andrew, you look it up. Crazy, right? What is that? You know, wild? You know, Isn't that funny? I hate to, you know, there's a lot. Like of you're you're picked, okay? You're already recognized as you're in the NBA, so you're already one percent of the of the less than 1% of the population yeah. and which it separated you being great yeah. and then you make the all-star team which is like the 1% of the 1% <laughs> and now we're concerned about the that feelings? guy's feelings because Dude, he's picked last on the all-star team give me a break like okay so let's talk about Brock Purdy right Mr. Insignificant yeah okay like nobody thought like Okay, so you, you brought up the statistics before of like anybody that's actually even like made the team. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that has been picked at, at you know, at that low of a, a draft pick. Yeah. And then for him to make his way through all of that and perform at the level that he did, that's what we want to see that, yeah. you know, and that story is what everybody needs to aspire to uh Bring that up and and and, and repeat it and, and reinforce the fact that that can happen. Yes, but also there's more. I'll make the argument that there's more value in learning how to lose. Yes, than there is in learning how to win. I don't mean that's, to be a loser. That's not what I mean. That's I mean the whole education. Learning right how to lose. Why is that more valuable? Than learning how to win because you will lose more in life than you'll win. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you dude. will lose way more in life than you win. Winning wins are a small percentage of everything. Losses are a huge percentage of life. And if you don't learn how to lose, you're going to get into life and you're going to be like, it's unfair. I'm entitled. Give me this. Give me that. I'm not doing well, this. this. I'm not doing that. This is where you see the meltdown, right? Yeah, it, it, it's, the, it's the same thing you see in a toddler that has a freak out, right? And they just have a meltdown. 
because they, they're not emotionally strong enough and capable to deal with uh, something not going their way. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of strength. And we see this in adults now. And speaking of strength, uh, you guys got to see the studies on red light therapy and uh, joint pain and joint strength. Really remarkable stuff. It's actually very effective at treating joint pain like arthritis. So I was doing some reading on red light therapy. This is, uh, we're mentioning Juve because that's one of our partners. And for arthritis, it significantly reduces arthritis pain. It is not a drug, does not cause joint degeneration like NSAIDs do. It actually causes the joints to heal themselves. So if you have joint pain, way better option. Now, when you read that, is there a generic prescription in order to see that significant relief? Like I know in that, like when we've talked about hair regrowth and, and wrinkles and vibrant skin, like the, the generic prescription I think is three times a week at 20 minute bouts or 10 yeah, minute bouts. I can't remember. So it's the same. Yep. It's the same yep. amount a few of days time. a week. Yeah. And you see significant improvement in joint pain and then you see improvements in recovery as well. So if you have, you know, joint pain or aches and pains or recovery issues, Correctional exercise would be first, second, uh, juve, because it doesn't just, you know, block the pain. It actually helps speed up the Dude, one of our magical friends, red light. One of our friends, I wish I remember which one of our friends I saw posted. I think it was one of our, uh, one of our female podcasting friends. I think it was, she had like a, a bed that was like a, like where you sleep and the, oh, wow. the light was above. So you oh, just, wow sleeping and having it hit on you like that. Oh, I, would, nice. yeah, that's, I, would I always like that. Scene. I know. I want to rig yeah. something up that it's, it's, I have it on the wall. It's blasting on me. Yeah. I've seen, I like your setup for sure. Um, and mine's just kind of leaning against the wall right now, but I, I want to have it to where it's like mounted somewhere that I have to go do yeah. that thing every, like every day, or at least a few times a week that I could just turn it on at the same time. Like I wanted to do like above my shower. So I shower twice a day, every day, like, to where it's just, just part of the process. As soon as I... Yeah, you're in there, turn it on. Yeah, turn it on and and just... Speaking of friends, let's shout out uh, Max Schmarzo, uh, uh, Strong by Science. Great page, very smart uh, with athletic training and just training in particular, uh, especially if you're a trainer or a coach, just somebody you'll learn from. He uh, yeah. blows our minds all the time. He's one of my favorite pages to follow. It, to this day, uh, I still get... And I, and I think what I brought him up earlier was, you know, he'll, he comes in, he pops in my feed all the time. And he'll it'll be an exercise I've never done or yeah. used, and it's an incredible. And, and it's not a bullshit it's, exercise. Yeah, it's, no, it's a brilliant technique um, that's normally like you know uh, related to athletics. And I'm like, God, dude, he's got so much good, free, valuable content. Like, if you don't follow him, and you're an athlete, or you have a child that's an athlete, or you're a trainer, yeah, or you're trained, you're missing out. So he's a totally. must follow for sure. Did you know cooling down your bed can help you fall asleep faster? It helps tell your brain to fall asleep, helps you stay asleep. It improves muscle recovery. You wake up more rested, and it also increases the time you spend in deep and REM sleep, REM sleep. Well, there's a company called Sleep Me, makes a device that goes on your mattress that cools your bed. It also warms your bed if you like it a little more warm. By the way, they have some products where both sides can be controlled independently. So if you and your partner like different temperatures, so be it. It's a great company. Go check them out. Go to sleep.me forward slash pump 30. And that link will allow you to take 25% off any of their sleep systems. All right, here comes the rest of the show. All right. Our first caller is McKenna from Washington. Hi, McKenna. How can we help you? Hey, how's it going? Good, good, good. Uh, well, as everyone says, thank you guys so much for all the information you share. I've been a listener since about 2019, and uh, needless to say, you guys have drastically changed my relationship with fitness. So thank you. Right on. Sweet. Yeah. So my question is pertaining to low testosterone in women. Um, I recently had extensive lab work done, and my hormones across the board were all extremely low, but testosterone in particular was so low, it didn't even register on one of the labs. Um, so this is of course a concern of mine because I've been lifting since about 13, I'm 25 now. And I feel like I've just completely plateaued in the gym, despite switching things up. I'm not recovering well. Uh, if anything, after my workouts, I feel pretty inflamed and my hair is falling out in the masses, um, among many other things, but I also haven't had a cycle in consecutively two years and in total, it's been about three. I will add about seven years ago, I started having really bad digestive issues and it's just um, uh, continued throughout those seven years. And so I think that that was probably what triggered all of this. 
I'm doing what I know how to naturally increase testosterone, lifting heavy weights. I do hit my protein goal. Uh, I think you guys would be happy about that. Supplement quite a bit. Um, and I eat primarily whole foods. So I've heard you guys speak highly about tes testosterone replacement therapy in men, but I'd love to know if you think low dose therapy could be useful for a female, especially in this situation. Yeah. Good question. So mm -hmm. I would not, re so uh, first off, of course, we're not doctors, um, but for someone your age and with some of the symptoms that you're noticing, um, especially in the context of, you know, you said you had gut issues. Yeah. I'd send her to Cabral I would first. not, yeah, I would not go on testosterone therapy because although you may notice some, some symptom relief, it's not, it, it wouldn't be addressing. Yeah. Not yet at least. The root. <clears throat> and especially because your age, you're so young. Um, I would look definitely at the root cause of your gut health issues. If you have um, SIBO or, you know, that's small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or fungal overgrowth, because you could have that too. Um, if you have any autoimmune issue that's not being addressed, uh, you, a parasite, all those things could cause nutrient deficiencies because of malabsorption. And the symptoms of, of that are inflammation, autoimmune type symptoms like fatigue, and then the nutrient deficiencies, even if you supplement because you're not absorbing well, could be causing all the hair loss and some of the other symptoms. So uh, have you have you worked with a functional medicine practitioner to try to address specifically what is going on? Maybe go through and get tested, like, you know, like things like stool test, blood test, see if you have parasite or any type of uh, bacterial overgrowth. Yeah, I've been through the ringer with testing and different doctors. I haven't seen a functional doc, but I have seen a naturopath, a few of them. Okay. Okay. Um, and a lot of different things have come up with the digestive issues. SIBO definitely being one of them. Okay. And then did you, did you treat the SIBO? Um, I did. I haven't had it retested. Um, I was also, I had lymphocytic colitis and again, that hasn't been retested. Okay. I would definitely address that. That's, that's probably causing all of your symptoms and the workouts and supplements will only do so much unless you really figure figure out what's going on. When McKenna, you did the McKenna, are you in the our, our free forum, Dr. Cabral's forum that we have for free? No, nope, I'm not. Okay, you got to get in there. I mean That's uh, what is that called? Is it MP Holistic Health? That's right. So go there. It's on Facebook, so and it's free for anybody. Um when you did your treatment for SIBO, uh, I'm assuming they put you on antibiotics? Herbs. Um okay. I've been on like over 30 rounds of antibiotics in my life and so I didn't want to go that route. Holy cow. And then after you did mm. that, did you notice any symptom relief? at all. I did a little bit, but it wasn't anything amazing. Okay. So, so sometimes if there's, um, if, if there's something going on that they can't figure out, you can treat the SIBO, but it'll come right back. And so you see this reoccurrence in, in people who have SIBO, which is quite high. It's something like 60% of people will get rid of SIBO, but then it comes back because there's some underlying cause either the mm -hmm. their waste removal isn't working properly or there's a sometimes there's valve issues um, with the gut so I would work with a functional medicine practitioner to look at the root cause um, and figure that out because testosterone therapy can be quite valuable but it, in, in your case it, you may get some symptom relief but it wouldn't solve the problem yeah it ends up masking it's the it. root it would, yeah, yeah and, and it would just it could potentially make things worse because then you start to think, oh, I'm feeling a little better. Um, and then you end up pushing yourself a little too hard or whatever. So I would 100% recommend you work with a functional medicine practitioner and try and figure out, you know, it could be mold toxicity. You know, I worked, uh, I just interviewed uh, Dr. Becky Campbell. She's another fun functional medicine practitioner. And um, she is a practitioner herself and couldn't identify what the problem was. And then she did some mold testing and found that she was, there was some mold toxicity in her house and that was uh, what was causing them. And then, and then she was fine afterwards, but up until then she was doing all the, everything. She was treating herself for so many different things. So there is a root cause of what's going on. We just got to figure that out. And until we do, um, you know, hormones aren't going to solve it. Um, are you on, you're not on any of the hormones like birth control, right? No, never have been. Okay. Were you an athlete? Uh, I mean, I played soccer growing up, but it wasn't anything super competitive. I just got into lifting at like 12 and um, have been pretty religious with that. Yeah. Yeah. This, that's where I would put 100%. If you were, you know, if you were my daughter, I'd say, I want you to go. Oh, I'd make you go through Cabral. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Go through, go through all the tech. He's, it's worth it for sure. If anyone's going to get to the bottom of this, I feel like it's going to be him. Yep. 100%.
That's helpful to know. I've listened to your podcast uh, episodes with him and he's pretty awesome. Yeah, no, he's, yeah. he's, he's amazing. And the forum's amazing too. They're incredibly helpful in there too. So even if you just get in there and start trouble, even to know what test you should start with, like right. you telling him uh, what's going on with you and they'll even be able to give you a recommendation on, on the order of what test to start doing first. But um, yeah, so, you know, small intestinal fungal overgrowth can also seem like bacterial overgrowth, but it's a different, it could be a different type of treatment. I mean, just as an example. So, um, but it's all starting from the gut is, is, it's what it sounds like to me. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, no problem. So go on that forum, Dr. Stephen Cabral, his website is Stephen Cabral. Dot com. Dot com. Stephen Cabral dot com forward slash mind pump. I think you can go to as well. Okay. Good luck. Great. Thank you guys. Thanks, McKenna. You know what I can't help but think about right now is that, you know, Sal called in sick yesterday and he would have been sick today. <laughs> Justin and I would have been left with a question like that. <laughs> oh my God. I would have just deferred right away yeah, to right Cabral away. because that's, she's seriously, uh, it sounds like she's tried so many things. She's too. sick. Yeah. She's yeah. Really sick. A lot more she needs to go through, unfortunately, to, to help kind of get closer towards that answer, you know, and, and testing wise and, you know, elimination diet, like all these things, like just to get to the root of it. That's that's it's tough, but it's it's necessary. Yeah. People don't realize this. The more people are starting to realize. But the gut is first off, this is where you get obviously all your nutrients. So if there's problems with the gut, you will or you can develop nutrient deficiencies, which can appear to be, you know, like like hair falling out brittle nails, uh, anxiety, depression, then you'll develop, you develop this kind of low level inflammatory response to the body. So you can feel like you have a kind of a fever or achy or depressed neurotransmitters are produced in the gut. It affects catecholamine production. It affects hormone production. If your gut is off, uh, your gut health is off. You're sick across mm -hmm. the board and you can test hormones and you can see issues with your hormones. You could test uh, you know, neurotransmitters, you could test inflammation and everything will seem off, but fixing those things is, it, you, it's not going to fix the issue. You have to look at, at the root of it. Um, and the gut is the root of a lot of these different things. So it's a big deal. And I'm speaking from personal experience. Well, my gut is off. Everything for me is off everything across the board, recovery, sleep, mood, mental sharpness. I mean, you, you name it. It's off. So, um, and, and the problem is, is that there's so many things that can affect the gut and it's such a complex system that it's not just one thing. And, you know, she's been on antibiotics 30 different times. I know. That's got to have an it's effect. It's got to have an impact for, for sure. sure. It's amazing that uh, functional medicine practitioners don't get more love than they get in our, in our space. They're starting to. They, they're yeah. starting to, but I mean, we still, I mean, we still have you know, <clears throat> PhD friends that, are you know think they're woo woo? You know? It's yeah. like crazy to me. It's like you take someone like that, and and it, that's going to be the only way she gets to the bottom of this. And when mm -hmm. she does, it's going to be life changing for yeah, her because it's a chronic issue. Yeah, you know that's they're the best uh, equipped for uh, you know something like that. It this. sounded like Doctor Stephen Gabral's story. He went through exactly the same similar symptoms through his twenties. And what made him a functional medicine practitioner is he found one mm -hmm. that cured all his problems. And and uh, and it was through that form of medicine. Our next caller is Jessica from Ohio. Hey, Jessica, how can we help you? Hi, guys. Thank you so much for having me on. And thank you guys for all the content you put out. Um, I recommend your podcast to uh, just about everybody. So thank you. Awesome. They're even listening. It's listening. But um, my question um, is in regards to MAPS Aesthetic. I actually just purchased it. And uh, my question essentially is for the past six months, I have started cycle syncing my workouts. So it's actually helped with my sleep. It's helped reduce uh, my PMS a little bit and it's increased my energy levels. Usually like yoga or any type of low intensity or low impact movement is what's recommended the week before the cycle starts. But me personally, I just like to be in a gym and lifting. So because I always um, programmed my own workouts, I usually just program in like a deload week for the week prior to my cycle starting. But with starting aesthetic, I want to follow the program as closely as possible to see obviously optimal results. So I was curious if you guys recommended that I just program in a deload week and just take those foundational workouts and just reduce the intensity for that week. 
Yeah. Or if you guys suggest I do like maybe just light focus sessions for that week, if I, if you guys have other recommendations or if I just follow the program as is and just throw out the cycle syncing altogether. No, that's a good question. So I'm going to, uh, I got two th- two comments on this. So cycle syncing is this new kind of market- marketable philosophy around exercise where you look at a woman's 30 day cycle and you say, okay, progesterone is high here. Estrogen is high here. This is when dopamine is highest. This is, you know, ovulating. And, you know, so your workout should look like this around this time, around that time. And women who do it are reporting what you're saying. They feel better. Now I'm going to, I'm going to tell you why they feel better. It has less to do with the cycle sinking and it has more to do much more with to do <laughs> with the fact that they're now, yes, they're, they're now cycling in yep. no pun intended um, deload weeks and they're, they're uh, modifying their intensity. Uh, usually people don't do that. Usually people push, 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 push until the signals get so loud that they have to take time off. Very rarely do people intelligently put in deload weeks or put in lower intensity weeks in their training. Now, a lot of people, women have this this wonderful way of marketing programs because, and I say it's a marketing way of, 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 uh, of selling programs because there's very little to back up the fact that you need to change your workouts according to your cycle, uh, especially when we compare it to the individual, because you, you probably know this better than I do, but you can meet two or three different women and they'll feel different at different times of their cycle than each other. Now there's this general kind of consensus that, Oh, you know, ovulation, you have the most energy, you feel the best. Other women are feel the most irritable, when they're ovulating, uh, some women will say they feel the most tired during this time. Other women say, well, actually, that's actually when I feel energetic. So we've always promoted people train themselves as individuals. And this is how we've always trained people, whether it was men or women, we train them as individuals. The reason, again, why people are getting benefit from this is because this is the first time that a lot of people have intelligently included lower intensity workouts or weeks in their training. They're just using this as a, as a structure. This is, you know, this is when it's a week before my cycle. This is during the cycle. This is after the cycle type of deal. So you can keep it that way. There's nothing wrong with what you're doing. I would say if you want to take it to the next level, I would try to be more in tune with my own body, with your own body. And if it matches your cycle, so be it. But yeah, I think everybody should should intelligently include weeks where the intensity is lower or weeks where they focus on less volume and less frequency. In fact, uh, the newest program that we just released MAPS Anabolic Advanced is the first program where we specifically put it in the programming because we know that we could tell people all day long, listen to your body. People tend to not do it. So if it's structured in the program, they tend to follow it and get better results. So yes, my answer to what you're saying is yes, just go lower intensity um, during those weeks. Uh, And then the second part is if you could listen to your body and really kind of adjust it according to how you feel then you would really be taking it to the next level. Is this the first MAPS program that you've done? Yeah. So I've always programmed my own workouts. And then after listening to you guys, and I think I have taken myself to um, maybe as far as I can go. And I know you guys always talk about novelty and just completely changing it. I've always done like your focused workouts, you know, legs, push, pull, legs, full body. And I do full body workouts, but Mm. I wanted to try something that was completely different than what I'm used to, to see the results. So this will be the first time that I'm doing anything. Okay. Yeah. I just bring that up because that's one of our more high volume programs. And I'm wondering if, you know, jumping into that and then your body telling you that you're benefiting from this, uh, you know, recovery week, deload week, you know, whether something like the MAPS anabolic or or our other program might be a better suited fit initially, just because of the the overall volume and, uh, you know, kind of going in that direction. Yeah. What made, what made you pick aesthetic first? Just curious. Um, mostly how you guys talk about it and how other people will ask, you know, when they're trying to achieve a certain look in their body. Um, usually I, lean towards aesthetic and I'm more so not looking for necessarily like a lot of strength or a lot of, um, like symmetry, anything like that. It's just, I really am more so, um, interested on how my body looks and 
that realm. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I think uh, what the the point Sal was making is is so true. And I, I remember when that study came out. It was last year when that study came out, right? Where they they trained the two groups. One group was taking a week off every yeah. fourth week, right? That was last yeah. year. That blew my mind. So, I mean, and I think that just highlights how, how little people program lower intensity weeks. And I think what you're feeling is exactly that. And you can do it by reducing the amount of sets. You can do it by cutting out the, you know, foundational days and just doing focus. You can also do it by just reducing the intensity on everything that's in the program. And I think what I would suggest, because it's a three month long program is actually kind of toggle between all of those and see which one you like the best and feels the best. You may you may find just doing the focus days is a is a perfect amount of volume and intensity for you. You may feel like you need to scale back on some of the sets. I mean, I would actually kind of test each one each time you do each time your cycle comes around. Test out your your different theories on how to do that and actually see what feels the best and the, and go based off of that. But no matter what, you're not going to lose gains by doing that. If anything, it's only going to promote more gains by taking you know scaling back on that week for sure. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Right. Um, and then I had one other small question on the focus days. Um, I want to add in, add in like 10, maybe 15 minute like walk sessions or maybe doing the stair step right now and again, just to get a little bit of cardio, but I don't want to overdo it. I noticed obviously that cardio isn't programmed in. <laughs> Is that okay? Cause I don't yeah. want to mm-hmm. go. That's a great yeah, time to do it. That's totally fine. It's great. There's no, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that at yeah. all. You can do that every day if you want. Yeah. Especially walking, but you could even get away with the 12 minutes of hit. Yeah. Uh, on those days, that's the hit, hit, hit cardio would be fine there too. So, I love I that. love that. Okay, perfect. All well, right, thank right. you guys. Helps me so much. I'm excited to start a uh, aesthetic and see the results. You awesome. got it, Jessica. Right. Thanks for calling in. Thank you. This is a case of accidental brilliance with marketing. <laughs> I, listen, I, I'm going to speak from a from a fitness marketer perspective, right? So, if I'm on the other end. Yep. And I'm like, all right, here, check this out. So I'm selling you guys, right? So let's let's just paint the picture. I didn't let's even say. know the name of it. I'm glad you did. Yeah. So so let's say I go, um, all right, guys, uh, we're going to create this new theory around exercise. It's called sy- cycle syncing mm-hmm. because a woman's body runs off of a 28 to 30 day hormonal cycle. And we're going to sell them on the weeks where they're supposed to feel the best. That's when they're going to train the hardest. The weeks they're supposed to feel the worst. They're going to train the easiest. They're going to take care of themselves on those weeks, maybe feed themselves more because they have uh, more cravings. And then during these weeks, they're less cravings, so they're going to eat less. And we're going to paint this whole picture. And by the way, this has no science supporting it whatsoever, but here's why it's going to work, because it's going to make people take uh, some weeks and make them easier and train harder some weeks, which lots of data supports, all Mm -hmm. the data supports. In fact, if a man took the theory of cycle syncing. I was just going to say, how do we sell this to men? It doesn't matter. If you're a guy, follow cycle syncing for a woman and pretend you have a period once a month, follow it and you'll get better results. So th- the reason why, and, and why is it accidental brilliance? Because it works, but not because of the cycle. It works because of the programmed lower intensity, the programmed recovery. Man, and that's, training. yes. And that's what works. If you want to be specific, you would use heart rate variability or, you know, DeFranco has got a great grip test you could use way more accurate because regardless of what your hormones are saying, uh, there's so many other factors that could determine whether or not you should train hard or easy. By the way, if this was a thing, you would be seeing Olympic lifters train specifically according to their cycle and not based off of things like it's heart just rate variability. programmed uh, listening to your body. Yeah. I mean, well, no, it's not, it's just programmed in. It's not listening to your body, but it's better well, than it's, not programming any of that stuff in. Right. Yeah. Well, you know what else did this blood type diets? Yeah. Yeah. Same thing, same yeah. thing, but in the, on the, in the nutritional world, right. You, you put, you, you tell all these people to get your blood type, follow a diet according to that. Well, just, just you, following a diet, just <laughs> you following yeah. a diet. And then also probably people going after foods, maybe they weren't. And yeah. so now that you get a, a, a more diverse gut or you introduce <sighs> a food that maybe has more fiber that you weren't having before or a nutrient or a micronutrient that you were missing. And so these people are reporting back like, Oh my God, this is what I was missing was, you yeah. know, eating for my blood Let's type. This way. Program recovery is a better way. To totally. It's, it's, here's another example. Are you a pear? Are you built like an apple? Are you built like a whatever? I don't know if you guys have ever seen that before. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anything yeah. that can make Body somebody type. totally. Anything that can make somebody be like, "Wow, that's totally that's me." me. That's me. The you are an individual and there's so many factors in your life that will influence how your body's recovering and responding and adapting. So many different factors 
that uh, you have to look at yourself like an individual. And the reason why this works has nothing to do with the cycle, has everything to do with finally people are now programming in these deload weeks and programming in time to allow their body. You, to you know what I always think about when we have somebody like that? And then obviously she's going to get the opportunity to hear this part later on. Like, has she, has she, does she already have the confirmation bias because it's already impacted her? Totally. Yeah, for sure. That even hearing us say it, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. But it, but it still works for me. It's, yeah. it's, it's yeah, just yeah. like when you tell someone drink a gallon of water a day or, or do cardio first thing in the morning, empty stomach, like, it does burn more fat. Well, no, you just drink nothing else and you end up eating less food if you work out first thing in the morning. Right, right. Our next caller is Jaime from California. Jaime, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey guys, how's it going? Good. good. All right. Awesome. Well, Super excited. I love you guys' show. So just thank you so much for having me on today. I appreciate it. No problem. Sure. So I'm going to move to first thing background very briefly, and then I'll move on very quickly to my question as well. Okay. So to start off with, um, about a year ago, I went whole foods plant-based um, for personal reasons. And um, in the first three months of that journey uh, felt fantastic. Um, however, my muscle mass, I noticed during that time fell dramatically. Um, and considering I didn't have much muscle mass to begin with, um, you know, definitely wasn't a good situation. I was quite frail, uh, at that time. So, uh, I discovered you guys about nine months ago and, uh, I started resistance training, uh, increased my protein targets as well. So fast forward now, I went from 175 about nine months ago. Currently I'm at 190. My maintenance went from 2,200 and currently I'm about 3,400 Wow! for calories. Excellent. And so as far as I can see, I'm headed in the right direction. And I feel really, really good, a lot stronger, feel awesome. Um, so my question is, now that my maintenance is much higher at 3,400 calories, how do I continue to build muscle under a bulk when my hunger levels have kind of pretty much just plateaued? Yeah. Good question. So, so two things I want to address with this. One is typically you do need to raise your calories if you want to gain more muscle. Number two, this isn't always the case. Okay. If that were always the case, bodybuilders would have to eat 15 to 20,000 calories a day, which they don't. Um, and now there's a, a high degree of individual variance here. Okay. Some people tend to have much, you know, faster metabolisms when this happened, other people much slower. But I can tell you that you could definitely build more muscle on your current calories by following a very effective workout program or a workout program that sends a, an effective muscle building signal. What kind of workout are you currently following? Are you following any of our programs? Um, I, I, I do a little bit of the Mind Pump TV tutorials type of deal. Um, but, but if you want to know more specifically, um, I, I work out twice a week with resistance training. Um, one day a week I do strength training. So that can either be low rep or even a five by five. And then on the other day, I usually take it a little easier. I do volume training and, or, uh, sometimes like hypertrophy training too. On the off days, just as a, another disclaimer, I do like mobility work. So I take like vinyasa yoga, um, just kind of like work, you know, play basketball, just, you know, keep my activity up. Okay. I'm going to send you maps anabolic because maps anabolic, I bet you don't have to change your calories. I bet if you follow maps anabolic, you'd add you'd probably gain a good four pounds of lean body mass just from doing that without having to change your calories. You're hitting your protein targets, correct? Yeah. I hit about a uh, 200 to, to 10. Yeah. Yeah. Follow maps anabolic after maps anabolic, follow maps anabolic advanced. Uh, that's the new program that we just released. And, um, I bet you won't have to raise your calories because those calories are pretty high for a guy your size and you'll probably see some size. So in my experience, when I've followed a really good workout program, you know, cause okay, if you really break it down, it's more complex than this, but you know, to gain a pound of muscle, which is a lot, you know, let's say you gain a pound of muscle a month, that's 12 pounds in a year, which is a lot. A pound of muscle doesn't require a ton of calories. It just doesn't. Now, the reason why some people need so many more calories to gain that pound of muscle is there's a lot of energy waste going on in the body and the metabolism is quite complex, but really if you boil it down, if your body really wants to build muscle, you only need a little bit more calories to make that happen. So I don't think you need that many more calories. I think if you kept your calories the same, but did a really effective workout, and what I mean by effective isn't necessarily harder, 
just really good programming. I bet you would gain some good lean body mass from doing that. Now, at the at the absolute worst, you would gain some muscle and your appetite would increase, which would help you eat more calories anyway. So I'll send you MAPS Anabolic. I think that'll that'll be the program uh, to do. After that, MAPS Anabolic Advanced. So first of all, uh, you're you're doing a hell of a job. I think the the fact that you've you've put 15 pounds on, the fact that you've got your calorie maintenance up there. I even like the way you're your, your training. Uh, a suggestion, because this happens to when you get to this place where you've been trying to bulk for a while and then you just get to a place where it's like, God, this is a lot of food for me to go up anymore is difficult. Sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll run a little mini cut. And that will, you know, reignite my, uh, you know, my, um, the hunger signals and make me want to eat more again. So <laughs> three to five days, drop your calories and then go right back into the bulk. Sometimes that will, that will help you couple that with Sal's advice with maps anabolic. And I absolutely think you're going to be just fine. You'll see great results doing that. Awesome. Fantastic. I mean, you know, I was kind of headed in that direction too. Uh, the only uh, qualm that I had, I guess, was. Uh, when you're doing, say, like a five day or maybe a week uh, worth of uh, mini mini cut, um, how, how do you approach the training during? You just lower the intensity. Um, I mean, if you if you if you need to, you probably don't need to. Yeah, you'll be you'll probably be fine following it the way you are. Yeah, you're yeah. not going to go from 3,400 calories to 1,000 calories. Yeah, yeah, don't go. Yeah, that I would go from 34 to like. 24, 2,500, mm -hmm. which is still plenty. You may notice a little bit of a performance drop, but that's just normal. Yeah, you just keep at it. Okay. Awesome. Well, I love you guys. Thanks so much. You guys are awesome and uh, love all the content you guys put out. Just keep it up. I think one of these days I'm going to see you guys like on Joe Rogan or something because uh -huh, like, cool. the trajectory you guys are going, you know, awesome. you guys are. Thank you. That'll be the day. Thank you. We'll, we'll Thank send you, over Jaime. maps anabolic to you, bud. Thank you so much. I appreciate Thanks, that. Jaime. You got all it, right. man. Yeah. The whole, it's interesting with metabolism, you know, it, it, there's like these general rules, but there's such a, a, a there's this like this, why this gap of, calorie, you know, efficiency, inefficiency mm -hmm. that can happen within it. Like, you know, you could take someone with that high of a caloric maintenance, cut them. Sometimes they lose no weight or you can put someone in bulk. They gain no weight. We do that with reverse dieting all the time. Yeah. Um, it's the signaling plays a big role in that. And I've done it myself where I've gained muscle, not changed my food intake uh, just from sending a better well, muscle. It reminds me, was that conversation you had with Ben Pikulski is yep. we, we initially thought that bodybuilders must have the, the most ridiculous amount of calories they're intaking yep. in order to maintain that humongous of a physique, but it's, it's quite uh, the opposite. They just are efficient at uh, yep. utilizing it. Yeah. I think he's just, he's, he's uh, experiencing a, a pretty normal plateau from yep. somebody who's, you know, started, he, he, He's figured some things out diet wise and uh, training. He's used uh, sounds like the things that that we talk about on the show to piece together mm -hmm. a, a decent routine. Plus the switching from vegan over to right. a, a more balanced yeah, more diet, strength training focus. Yeah, and I think he saw good results initially from that, and then he's probably plateaued because it's pretty similar. And he just I think giving him a laid out program. You add that with a couple of days of low calorie and that uh, the new big, program big is going to make him probably hungry in itself, yep. low cal for a few days and then going back up. Those things should be enough for him to, yeah. to, to break through that plateau. Our next caller is Chris from New York. Chris, what's happening? How can we help you? Like them concourse. Hey guys. Thanks for uh, having me on the show. Uh, I'll start off by saying that, uh, your show has supplanted uh, the Joe Rogan podcast. No longer listen to him. It's all mind pump all the time. So Whoa, just want to wow, leave that. That's deal. a big compliment. Well, I'm 43 years old. I've been working out since pretty much high school when I played football. And for pretty much my entire life, I think I've taken the wrong approach until listening to you. Uh, I've been doing a regular uh, bodybuilder type workout, eight to 10 reps. I've always pretty much been on a cut. I've never tried to bulk. And I started to listen to you guys and uh, I changed my mind recently. In October, when I had my birthday, I was the heaviest I've ever been. I was 189 pounds at five foot seven and a half. January, I was down to about 170 pounds, but I stopped pretty much losing weight doing the same workout. Um, I was eating about 1800 calories. At that point, I bumped it up to about 2500 calories. And that was a month ago. I jumped on my scale today. I've gained about maybe one pound. <laughs> and part of it might be I play basketball three days a week uh, on my lunch hour. For the last 15 years, I've been doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I'm a brown belt in Jiu Jitsu. And my question is 
I don't really want to stop doing my recreational activities. Should I be increasing my calories by like 200 calories and see what happens? Do I need to be a little bit more patient and see if I just stick with 2,500 and uh, see if I start putting on a little bit more muscle? And then ultimately, at what point should I start going back on a cut? Because my goal is I want to see my abs for the first time in my life, or at least see some muscle hardness. Uh, unlike Sal, who was a skinny kid, it sounds like, I've always been a little bit on the doughy side. Um, I've always had some muscle underneath that dough, but I, in my 40s, want to look like, uh, you know, maybe the best shape of my life. Yeah, you could, you could definitely uh, bump your calories. I, how does sure. your appetite feel? Are you okay eating what you're eating? So going from my cut at, you know, around 1,800 calories a day to 2,500, and a lot of protein in there. I'm eating between 170 and maybe 200 grams of protein a day to pack on some muscle. I'm pretty full at the end of the day, but um, I can I can find some room to eat some more. Yeah, you could bump your calories. That'll put on a little bit of, of muscle on you. Also, you're doing so much jujitsu and basketball. How often are so? That, I'm assuming you're doing two or three days a week of basketball. Probably another two or three days a week of jujitsu. Is that is that correct? For, it, so jujitsu, I've cut back on. Um, with Corona, um, we had some issues. I have two little kids and I got Corona from my jujitsu school. So there was a little pause put on that. So I've mostly been doing basketball and I just got, uh, aesthetic. So I've been doing that for the last couple of weeks, um, as my, my primary workout. Oh yeah, uh, You guys had the promo code. So I didn't go for anabolic. I went right for the one that was cheaper. Yeah. yeah we're going to scale you back for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, definitely, I would actually drop you to one day a week of strength training, maybe two on the days where you really cut back on the basketball. I'd increase your calories to 800 to a thousand more calories a day. You, you got a lot of activity going on, a ton of activity. Now you don't have to jump that high right away you can creep up say but i 200 i don't even think is enough i think three to 500 minimum i would increase you calorie wise and then i would reduce your strength training to one one day a week when you do three days of basketball or more and then if you have a week where maybe you only play ball like two times then you could probably lift uh two days of the full body and i think anabolic is the is the program we'll send that over to yeah. you are you okay with not doing basketball for a while i mean how bad do you want to put on muscle i really like hitting three pointers and crossing people over so um <laughs> i could cut it back to like a maybe a day or two but um you know if it was short term to put pack on some muscle i could probably do it for a little while um but I, I really love it. It's something I enjoy. Yeah, I would yeah. look if you if you want to try. I would go maps anabolic, two foundational workouts a week, one day a week of basketball. Bump your calories, four hundred calories. You'll put on muscle. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, you will for sure. Doing that aesthetic with what you're doing with basketball, way too much. Yeah, way too okay. much volume. Yeah, it'll be hard to gain anything with all with all that. So if you don't have anabolic, we'll send that to you. Yeah, I just have aesthetic, and quite frankly, you know, I've heard you say to other guys, I've been an athlete my whole life, and I always want to do more and. I think you, uh, you know, my first inclination was 200 calories should be enough, but clearly I was wrong. So yeah, I'm glad no. I did call you guys and got your input. Look, there's, there, you, you, your body could probably tolerate a lot, but that mm -hmm. doesn't make it ideal for what your goal is. Yeah. So you could probably get got away it. with doing a ton of work and, you know, eating what you're eating, but that means you're not going to probably get the goals that you're looking for. If you really want to get the, those goals, I would go one day a week of basketball. I'd do MAPS anabolic and I would bump my calories and then you'll put on the muscle for sure. You guys make it sound so easy. So uh, I'll follow those instructions and <laughs> it's, it's, give it a try. See what happens. It's the mental part. That's it's, the hard yeah, part. Yeah, it's man. not easy. It's yeah. simple. There's a difference between easy and simple. So. Don't, don't let go of the basketball, though. I'm listening yeah. to you talk right now, and I, I'm actually <sighs> jealous of where you're at. I, I at you, Where you're at in your life, like, I actually, I could, I care less about what I look like, and I know that's, you know, that's just my goal. I'm saying I would rather be playing basketball with my kids still, and 43, yeah. you being able to play three times a week, like, you're in a you're in a pretty good place as far as health is concerned, but I I understand wanting to build muscle and that being a good goal. If you take Sal's advice, you cut back on the basketball, you follow anabolic. We bump our calories five to eight hundred calories. You're you're yeah, maintain the skill. You know, shoot in your in your backyard and and you know like I you just got to reduce that overall um, you know cardiovascular output. And so you know that's that's the, the sort of the compromise you got you have to kind of reconcile with is like to to be able to get that muscle, we need adequate rest. So you know it's going to be mentally tough, but if you can do that for like a a short season, if you will. Uh, of putting muscle on, uh, you're going to benefit from that in your game as well. 
Sounds great. Thanks, guys. And Adam, I just want to add, I do see that heat on your feet from time to time on YouTube. So uh, I like the sneaker game. All right, so I'm glad you appreciate it because yeah. my, my producer gives me shit for putting my feet up on the on the thing there. So I knew some people like that. I like all the concords you knew he was you got your back favorite. there, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least background. it's helping your market share with me. So uh, uh, right thanks, on. guys. I, I appreciate all the yeah. information, and I'll get cracking on that right away. You awesome. got it. Right on. Adam's heat on his feet. Heat Justin's, on the feet. Justin's heat in the seat. <laughs> heat in the seat. You got the, the hot, the hot yeah. over here. Sal slinging it in the street. All right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know uh, it's funny listening to him like, that's where I want to be right now, dude. In his closet with all those shoes? No, <laughs> dummy. Oh, my bad. <laughs> 43 years old. 43 years old with a kid playing ball three, three times a week like that and able to and a brown belt in jiu-jitsu. I mean, yeah, he's, yeah. he's in a, a pretty he's damn still good. still athletic, man. Well, yeah, you know what? You know what's funny about this is that you always want what you don't have. Yeah, I know. Grass, that's grass is green on the you, other you side. Get a, okay, fine. He'll get a six-pack, but he'll probably like what he's doing now more than a six-pack. I mean, everybody thinks I like, have a six-pack. Dude, six if he just to- focuses on like joint integrity and staying yeah. strong, like... Like, who cares about how much size you got? Yeah, right? you know, able body. People again, put too much value on on, on having a six pack. I, it's it really also, doesn't bring him that. Much it's value. easy for us to say that, right? Because we've been building well, our physiques for most of our lives here, right? So, like, I get it. So, what's cool yeah. is take the advice. You know, get get to where you want to be. You could, he's actually would, really easy if he just took that advice of cutting back on the basketball in j- yeah, training. He would gain the size. Yeah, he would gain the size. He'd build muscle and and build his metabolism up. And then literally, what he could do is scale back to one week, pick up the basketball, and he'll just naturally lean out. Yeah, mm-hmm. that'll be enough to keep hang on to his muscle. And then him adding adding the basketball into his routine, That's a good point. lean right out sometimes, and get that six pack he wants. And, and look, truth be told, my strategy here is, and I would do this with clients too, is sometimes I would give them what they think they want mm-hmm. and, and and so that they could realize themselves because as i'm talking to him i know what i here's what i would guess that would happen he would do it he would get the six pack it'd be cool for a second then he'd be like oh, I, I miss basketball i miss jujitsu let me go back to that and then he would realize like it was a trade-off and uh it wasn't worthwhile there isn't a ton of value in being there isn't as much value i should say in being shredded people think there's so much value in it. That, it doesn't bring tons of happiness and excitement like playing sports with friends and performing well does, you know, I enjoy the workouts more than I enjoy the look. And that's just the, that's most just people the doing our shots off your belly or something. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 